This CNN podcast is brought to you by Johnson & Johnson. At Johnson & Johnson, we believe nursing is the essence of caring. Ah, backpacking. CNN's News of the Absurd. I'm Jared Bellini, and as you're watching this, I am in Panama running around with my backpack, meeting cool people, and butchering the Spanish language. No nail baño! No nail baño! Now, the beauty of backpack travel is that you don't need to take a lot of stuff because sometimes your luggage can get you into a bit of trouble, especially if you decide to pack a human skull because generally speaking, it's not a good idea to, alas, take poor Yorick with you to Philadelphia, which is exactly what a woman in Tucson recently tried to do before alert TSA screeners raised a red flag. We looked at it further, tried to find out uh, who it belonged to, uh, why it was there. The woman who was pulled off the plane said that she was planning to use it as a Halloween prop and that her boyfriend once brought it back from Okinawa. The human skull had been sitting in her garden for four years, and medical examiners verified her explanation, making this story totally less interesting. This was sitting in, on the ground in a garden in the dirt with some algae or moss growing. The woman was allowed back on the plane, but authorities kept the skull, which presumably wasn't a big deal since Sky Mall now sells human heads. Getting through security has truly become a pain in the butt, which is why I travel naked. But as for your carry-ons, well, airports have literally become graveyards for shampoo. So after all that fuss, Shouldn't you at least wind up in the right city? Well, don't count on it. Vera Kumo had made special wheelchair arrangements with US Airways to get her 83-year-old mother safely to Tampa. Finally, she calls me and says, I'm in the middle of the concourse. There's nobody here. But apparently what US Airways heard was, hey, just put her on any old plane and send her somewhere nice. Searching everywhere for her mother, Vera spoke with airport workers on the other end of the phone. He said, I'm in a black van. Do you see the black van? I'm like, no. He said, do you see? I'm in a white shirt. I'm walking your way. And I'm like, we're not in the same place. Vera then enlisted the help of a Tampa airport police officer who got on the phone and tried to sort it all out. Finally, he looked at me and he's like, your mother's in Puerto Rico. A spokesperson for US Airways who are still investigating the incident said, we have apologized to the family. News of the Absurd says, good idea. Finally, while I'm hopeful that I'll actually land in Panama City with at least most of my luggage, I can't say for certain that I'll enjoy the finest accommodations. You never know with hostels. But on the other hand, check out this house in Colorado, proof that sometimes looks can be deceiving in a good way. Stucco crack filling. Yes, the house is built out of 17,000 uh, tires, 170 bales. John Hager's house is different, primarily because if it ever caught fire, you could probably see it from space. But he's managed to turn these old tires, previously headed for the dump, into a one-of-a-kind abode. We came up with the concept of building them into the walls of a house. Neighbors around here spend four, five, six hundred dollars a month on heating bills. We're hoping to be, you know, fifty to a hundred dollars a month. It's been a two-year process, but the project is finally winding down and looking great. And now the only real concern is waking up one day to find your walls are gone and your house is sitting on four cinder blocks. It's kind of like living in Liverpool. Well, that's all for this edition of News of the Absurd. I'm Jared Bellini, somewhere in Panama.